So you are an actress, singer, wife, entrepreneur, and daytime television host. How does it feel to have that introduction? Um, weird, if I'm being honest, I still can't believe it. It still shocks me. I'm like, wait, what? Um, but I'm grateful. It makes me really, really grateful for the journey and just for the opportunities that I've been given. So I'm just really grateful. And speaking of opportunities, you are the first Latina television host as far as 2013. How does that feel to break that barrier for Brown? Women? I didn't, I, till this day, it's like argued because it sounds so outrageous. It sounds nuts when you're like, that doesn't sound normal that until 2013, there wasn't a daytime Latina talk show host. So the first part is it's an English channel, which still, then you hear that and you're like, that still sounds dumb. I know we grew up with Cristina and Laura and all of them, but for daytime television, there wasn't. And, and I was so shocked about it when we first launched the reel, they put out the, the publicity uh, on it. And um, I was like, this can't be right. Can we please double and triple fact check this they're like no adrian the only other person which would be considered news would be like a natalie morales but like even then uh, I, th I think she's poor she's poor she speaks portuguese she doesn't speak spanish but even then like that was like insane to me so how does it feel it feels amazing and at the same time it's bittersweet because it should have never taken that long and what is it like being specifically Boricua representation and being New Yorkan on television? It's a huge deal. I think that for a really long time, especially being in Hollywood, I played Mexican American for a long time because there were no roles for what I consider to be urban Latina. Um, and that was huge. So there, even when I came on the reel, a lot of people were like, were like, she's Latina. Why does she, you know, why does she? sound like that why does she i'm like oh it's a different culture you know growing up in new york being what it's a completely different culture and so um i was really glad that i was able to represent that and that there's not only one way to be latina absolutely and with the real coming back to filming in person what has that been like transitioning from filming at home to now being back in studio oh my gosh just for beginners i look better i have an actual team that helps me look better my lighting is better my outfits are better. I'm actually wearing pants. You know, I, I, it's, it's, it's life changing. I'm putting on shoes. I am, uh, I have my whole glam squad back. I mean, but more than anything, it's really special to be back with the girls in the same room. There's no delay. The communication is a lot easier. We can look into each other's eyes and have really deep, meaningful and intimate conversations, which is what is needed right now. And now talking about your journey and breaking barriers in the industry, what was your journey to becoming fearless as a woman in this industry? My journey to becoming fearless was just that. It was a journey. It took time. I think little by little, um, I became more comfortable in my skin. I think that that came from a lot of me time. I think when you're younger, you may be afraid of spending time alone and really getting to know yourself and who you are. And I needed that. So I think spending time alone for me now, even for my mental health, just getting to know what are the things I really want? What are the things I need? Um, getting to know myself has been the biggest part of becoming fearless because I, I feel like a lot of the times we are constantly doing things we're around people we never really get a moment to just sit and be especially now in this age of social media you're on your phone there's you hear everyone's voice but your own and i think becoming intuitive and knowing what your own voice sounds knowing what you like what you want out of life is super important so for me my me time is skin my like i know they say like self-care what is your self-care my self-care is skincare. So like even taking time to take a shower and like tell everybody, guys, I'm not available for the next 30 minutes. I'm going to take a quick little 15 minute shower, stand in there, close my eyes, meditate, think, pray. And then I'll take time to like, specifically, I feel like being comfortable in your skin takes time. That in itself is a journey. But then I would literally like appreciate my body. like doing simple things like putting on Olay firming body lotion with collagen was my me time. I'd literally put the lotion on and be like, God, I thank you for my body. Thank you that this body may not be the goal that I've set for it. <laughs> Taking that time to take care of myself has just been so helpful on that journey. I think prioritizing myself, my me time 
um, doing, I love that saying that says, do something today for yourself that your future self will be grateful for. And I think about that in everything. When I think about um, taking care of myself, when I think about staying hydrated, when I think about um, rest, like, you know, even though in the moment we're so hectic with our lives, but taking a moment to just woo is super important. And getting into your love of Olay, what is your favorite Olay product? My favorite, oh my gosh, okay. So now that I'm officially bi-coastal, I have been trying to like find the perfect moisturizer for my skin for what's about to be very cold winters in New York. And at the same time, the super dry heat in LA. And and like, you know, we've been, we've been ingesting, like we're having collagen broths, we're drinking collagen tea, but we're totally neglecting our bodies. So I am obsessed with this new collection from Ola. It's their new body lotions. And this one is the firming and hydrating one with B3 and collagen, but they also have other ones that are amazing. There's a whole new collection and your girl's obsessed. So this is definitely hands down my favorite. And I think it's important to use something that you actually visibly see a difference. You see firmer skin. You see that it's hydrated. I love that it's a non-greasy formula. So she's not out here looking like she just oiled her legs down, but that it absorbs quickly. And you see that as well. And now getting into this partnership, you guys are also doing something during Women's Small Business Appreciation Month. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. So they've partnered with LISC NYC, and it actually is... Um, to help entrepreneurs, specifically in Washington Heights, women of color. And I am all for that, being obviously an entrepreneur myself. And I think it's so important to help to support small businesses, especially of women of color. And that is just so important. I got to be a part of a really cool panel with some amazing women that were sharing their story and just not just what it was like to become an entrepreneur as a woman of color, but also to get through it during the pandemic and what that's been like for them. So it's amazing to see them uplifting, supporting and empowering uh, women entrepreneurs of color. And with you yourself being an entrepreneur of color and owning a luxury handbag line, but also a jewelry line, what's the greatest lesson you've learned as an entrepreneur? The greatest lesson I've learned is that no one is gonna care more than you. And that when you are an entrepreneur, even if you hired a team, you are still the boss of all those things. So I used to joke around that in this industry, I had to manage my managers, uh, agent my agents, assist my assistants. Like that's just the reality is when you are the boss of these things, you really do have to kind of micromanage every area. So I do everything myself. I literally, I'm the one that's sitting there designing. Like it's not that you're just gonna slap my name on something. My heart is in this blood, sweat and tears and and, that to me is what being a true entrepreneur is, that you're in every single facet of the company. And my final question for you is for fans who will be watching this interview, what advice do you give them to stay true to themselves while being in the entertainment industry? Being true to yourself. I think ultimately that's what, what, what is your truth. I think really writing down, I don't know, I think I'm so weird like this. Like I love to make lists. And I've been doing this for years. I make lists of what I'm going to do every day, but I also make long-term lists of what is it that I want to achieve? What do I want to be known for? What is the legacy that I'm ultimately uh, trying to accomplish? And I think that when you have that in mind, when you find out what your why is, it kind of changes the narrative of everything that you do. So I would say, um, yeah, think about that. Find out what your why is and make sure that everything you're doing aligns with that because you'll not only be successful, but you'll be really, really proud and happy of what you've done with what you've done. Well, thank you so much, Adrian. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. your day. Yep. And thank you for being what is our representation. We don't have a lot. So thank you. Oh, necessary. It really is. <laughs> thank you, Mama.